Hey y'all, I got chickens. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. My hat is hogging the frame. Yes, I got chickens and we had chickens in Montana when, what was it 2000, 2008 I think it was, is when we got chickens and my husband, this is my husband, David. He, hello, we, I, internet. I found a really cute, playhouse that was in this junkyard it was just sitting there forever and I asked the people of the the junkyard is like can I have that like can I just take it because it's just sitting there I'm gonna I'll make it something that's useful and whatever and they gave it to me and David converted it into a chicken coop moving down to Texas years and years later I want chickens again and I quickly realized that you can't create coops in South Texas the same that you have them in the northern states of the United States of America. So it's just so much hotter down here and so I learned very quickly that there's got to be things like ventilation for a hot summer for chickens to be comfortable. And so we did our research and we were highly inspired by the Cottonwood Shanty Chicken Coop. I mean, it looks very similar to that coop. I think that coop, I think she's more in a cold weather situation. I see snow in her pick sometimes. Uh, we don't get snow. I mean, I guess we got snow. We did have a yeah, snow apocalypse it was like, this year. You know, every 30 years. Super highly inspired by that design and also inspired by all of the useful tips and videos from Carolina Coops. Thank you, Carolina Coops, for posting those videos because, man, that helped us a whole uh, bunch. That helped me a lot. Thank yeah. You. Basically, we don't have any plans. We, I told David what I wanted it to look like. We looked at the functionality of what it needed to be like so that the chickens would be comfortable, and then we kind of came up with it on our own. Uh, each step of the way, just kind of coming up with stuff, and David saying, hey, what do you want this to be like? And I would come in and I would be like, no, don't do that, do this. And and there's probably certain things we probably would do different. I can think of one thing. <clears throat> one thing? That I'll point out when we do the tour. We'll share that so that you can learn from our mistakes, but we don't have any plans. We do not want to create any plans. There, If you're in the north part of the United States, you can buy the Cottonwood Shanty plans. I'll link them down below. And if you're in the hot south, you could buy a Carolina Coop. And I'll link them also. <laughs> because we're not creating any plans. <laughs> but we did want to share our coop and we know there's a lot of DIY people out there who could just do the same thing that we did. And uh, we just curated all of the things that we wanted and wanted to share that with you. We just were inspired by the Cottonwood Shanty look, but then the polished finished product of the Carolina Coops with some of their functionality and we just made those two as an inspiration and made a baby and I think there's things we learned from some others but uh, those were the two big ones. Yeah so we have very happy chickens they have already are roosting uh, they're young so we have seven chickens right now I was supposed to be getting an eighth chicken but it's getting way too late to be introducing another chick um, so I probably won't be getting that one but we're trying to in a couple years introduce two more uh, chicks you know as they get older so that we can have eggs you know because chicken menopause you know like they stop laying at some point and it's, it's nice to do what chicken is it paws called? egg paws yeah it's, put a pause on producing eggs yeah succession like when you succession plant getting chickens in succession so that we can have eggs so they don't just all stop laying we have eight chickens and nobody's laying i think that's it so we're gonna go ahead and start taking you on the tour welcome welcome Okay, so like I said before, we were highly inspired by the Cottonwood Shanty Coop. That coop is the most adorable coop I've ever seen. The th issue with it though is it was, they used a people door for the front. It was like this cute old door. That door would have been six foot eight inches, David was saying. Um, but we didn't want it to be so tall because it's very tall. What happened was when he was building, framing this out, I got in when he was doing the roof part and I was like, yeah, I can stand up right here. And we just built it to my height. <laughs> so we just chopped it off. Is that right, David? Yeah. You just kind of chopped it off to where I can stand up so I can do stuff in there. So 
So he actually built this door himself um, and he could probably share how he did that, but he built it, put the hardware on. The coop is four feet by six feet and we just have like this little gate thing here to hope it in. We have raccoons in our neighborhood. So this latch helps them not to, they know how to open this up. So if you put one of these on there, they're not that smart and they don't have the strength to open that up. So we just took that on there on all of our latches to keep coons out. But this is the inside of the coop. And so as you can see, I need to get in here for any reason. I can stand up just fine. So we have, everything is inside it. I painted uh, with a high glossy paint because hashtag chicken poop. We also put in hardware cloth. I think this is half inch, right? Is this half inch? Yeah. Hardware cloth on all the spaces that anything like this because critters can try to get inside. And then we used washers and screws to attach the hardware cloth just to make it super strong. So nothing can get in. These are like very strong places uh, where they can't get in. So we've got the hardware cloth. Uh, we even, he put in a little gable for ventilation. Uh, there's a ridge vent up here with hardware cloth so nobody can get inside. For the roosts, we used just two by fours and I painted them with, again, high glossy paint, uh, primed lots of coats of high glossy paint. These are just under four feet and we have this kind of like ladder roost where they can jump up here and then jump up here so that they can get high without having such a a big distance to go down when they're older because we do have heavier birds. They're dual purpose, they're a bit bigger. We don't want them to get hurt when they're coming down from roosting. Then we have the nest box right here from the inside, three spaces for them to nest, nice and cozy. We can access it from the outside and we'll show you that later. We wanted to do deep litter method. We heard from Carolina Coops that that was just the easiest and most common sense way. I don't have time to be cleaning out pine every week so this is the hemp straw that carolina coop sells it literally does not smell like chicken poop i have a super high sensitivity to smell this is that uh hemp straw that they sell it, it just keeps everything so dry it absorbs everything and it's amazing the chickens have been in here for i think a little over a month maybe or maybe about just a month but it, it has no smell at all i was struggling so bad with just the pine shavings in my office when they were staying in my office it stunk so bad this smells like nothing it's amazing and i just add, like aerate it with a rake a metal rake um twice a week maybe and just that's the key is keeping it aerated and fluffy and in a year to 18 months i clean it out and it goes in the compost pile and i put more in it's that simple there's other youtube videos on the deep litter system but i just love how easy this is for me to keep clean but this is where they sleep and this is where they'll be laying their eggs i'll put some straw in here when they're at the age of laying eggs which will be about august but for now it's empty because they're not ready <laughs> but i want to show you the cool windows that we have so that the ladies can get lots of air oh 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 and i totally copied the idea of the lanterns i got the lanterns on amazon and they're super cool i don't think you can probably see them now but they look like they're illuminated with fire but at nighttime, we'll maybe get a nighttime shot for y'all to see that. <laughs> and then we pot these little pots with rosemary because I love rosemary. I cook with it a lot and it just made sense to have rosemary. What we totally took from Carolina Coops was these inception windows. It's a window within a window. So like I was saying, once a year, like 12 to 18 months, I will be cleaning out the hemp straw, all of it, and shoveling it into a wheelbarrow. So, I always say wheelbarrow weird. Wheelbarrow? We wheelbarrow? Barrow? Barrel? Wheelbarrow? I don't know. This opens up completely. Oh. And then there's a latch in here so that I can open up this window. And I won't show you because I want all the litter to stay in but this is like a truck door and it opens up all the way down so that I can just rake out the, the litter. But there is a latch right here. So 
this opens up. I wanted the whole thing to be able to open up um, for really easy cleaning. If I needed to like legit hose it off with a pressure washer or something, then I can access everything super easy here. The cool thing about these windows or doors, I guess, is uh, I guess they're both windows and doors, is that you can open up another little door to give the chickens tons of ventilation. This is like so awesome. So I have here, both of these open. It provides so much air for them in the summertime. I'm very excited about this feature and we totally learned this from Carolina Coops and David figured it out. And all of the glass is plexiglass, which we chose because we have had some hail here and some pretty heavy wind and stuff. And we just didn't want to risk glass breaking in there. And if it yellows or something, we can replace it really easy. Yeah, those that's those windows. And then- But it we, does sit in the shade. So I don't expect it to honestly really yellow. Maybe the front door. Okay. <gasps> the babies are coming in. Hi, honeys. Ducky. Hi, Ducky. <laughs> You're so cute. You coming in? Hi, Trudy. Hi, babies. Look, and then you can like pet them because this opens. Hi, Boo Boos. Are you good girls? They're so sweet. I love them. If you go to the back, I'll show you the how we access the eggs without having to go inside the coop. So a lot of people, you'll see that they open up the nest box from the top which is an easy way to access them but one thing that the owner of Carolina Coop said was that because chickens are a prey animal anything from above really startles them so if one happens to be laying and you open up that door it just causes stress to the animal so we decided to go with a front uh, door so you open this up again and we just access it here and can collect our eggs when they start laying and it is super sturdy and I think you put some brackets didn't you put some brackets on this to like help it yeah there's some L brackets L brackets yeah on the corners you can't see them but it can take some weight this window is a really long window because I wanted again lots of ventilation and I wanted to be able to close it for cold weather or super rainy weather or open it so he put hinges on this window and the way that we keep it open for them is with some hooks and this chain so we just open it like that and this one we have to kind of twist it a little bit for it to be even it's not quite the same distance over time it should even out but yeah that's how we keep that open again everything is flowing through happy happy chickens for the roof we decided to go with a metal roof i don't know what they called this particular <laughs> style but this cute barn type roof and the reason is because shingles tend to retain the heat longer so the metal it can get hot but it cools down faster at night whereas shingles kind of keep the heat in there from what i was researching most people in the warmer states the hotter states went with metal roofs and it'll last a really long time so we went with metal the front door to the run is something that i asked for was a dutch door because i want to give the chickens some of my table scraps and so he built me a dutch door so that i'm not letting out chickens there are already some of them in the morning trying to escape when i open up the, the whole thing so i can just come out here with my bucket of scraps and open up this little part and then throw my scraps in and say hi <laughs> and then close it when i need to uh, the only thing that was prefabbed on this coop is this rooster from hobby lobby <laughs> it is so cute david found it and he put an extra couple coats of sealant on it so it'd be weatherproof and i just think it goes perfectly with the style of the coop hello lady hi baby that was for when they were playing with their ice cubes come on in we did put a little cord here because we accidentally 
lock ourselves in the coop one time. We used a wet stick. To, it took a while. It the, <laughs> the ramp up to the coop, uh, the hen house, is just some extra wood we had. We just, he built it with free lumber, repurposed lumber, and we put a couple like little wrong type thing so they could grip easily they can get up and down just fine with this ramp uh i was a little concerned about the distance but i mean they're getting bigger they're fine even the babies can get up and down but yeah i really liked adding just a touch if you've seen any of my journaling with me videos i do the 60 30 10 rule with design which is like 60 30 10 color so i would say the 60 is probably the white the 30 is the cream and the tin would be my natural wood. So we'll have little pops of natural, like the stairs. There's a little piece on the door that's natural. And then my ramp. Uh, we have another couple ventilation pieces here and we put some ornate, uh, what is this stuff? I don't know what this is. And let's air in. Let's air in while it's pretty. Yeah. And these, these windows work the same way. They just keep, keep, the air going in. David hung these windows like cabinet doors. And so he got these cabinet magnets and attached the other piece to the window so that if there was heavy wind, they weren't flapping in the wind. Um, I thought that was brilliant. And so they really do stay pretty snug. Like I'm, I mean, it's not like, it's pretty snug. Like the wind is not going to take that. We've had some pretty intense thunderstorms recently and they were not flapping around. We did invest in a chicken guard door. I heard so many great things about this company. And the thing that really sold me was somebody has a alarm camera of a badger trying to open this door at night and they couldn't figure it out. This is an automatic door. I like my sleep. I don't want to be up at the crack of dawn letting out chickens and closing a door in the evenings. This does it automatically for me. Um, it's set to read the light. And so when the light disappears, the door goes down. And when the sun is up, it comes up and it locks so nothing can get in. It's kind of poopy right here, but chickens poop. And you can do it, you're on your own. When the girls were learning how to go to bed, that this was their home, because they were inside for a little bit in their brooder box, and they weren't sure, like, instinct, we're supposed to go somewhere, and they weren't quite getting that they're supposed to go up high, you know, to roost. Um, there was times where we would put them in here ourselves, or the door had already closed, so we'd have to open the door, put them in, close the door, but after, I'd say like a week, all of them now are, are fine. They go up when the sun's about to set, they get up on their roost and the door shuts and everybody is safe. And it's, it's so nice to know that they're safe and that I don't have to open up a chicken door in the morning. So I would say that's such a big purchase that we made for the run, but so worth it. You should totally get one. Then other things is the, the watering system and what we chose to do our, our feed. Uh, I guess I'll start with the food first. This is from Rent-A-Coop and it is a treadle i think oh, how do you say that word treadle treadle i don't know how you say anything i'm not treadly enough for your treadle words clip. are hard so basically it's rodent proof and rain proof when we bought the house we were told that there was a rodent infestation in the attic and so there was rats around these parts and i did not want to be inviting rats for free food they're training right now but eventually this door will be closed and when they, when their weight hits this little lever here, it'll open up the door and they can get their food. Next week, we'll probably lower it a little bit because it just takes a process for them to learn. They know where their food is, but sometimes the movement of the lever here, the panel, uh, scares them. So we're just working on that for them. Apparently people save lots of money by not having chickens scratching their food everywhere and wasting it and other critters eating their food. For the water, we decided to put a rain capture system in and David kind of figured it up brilliantly himself. As far as the cups and the holders, this is also from Rent-A-Coop. 
and they're just these little cups and they fill up automatically. We thought about doing the whole nipple, chicken pecking the nipple thing or the little levers in the cups, but I heard much better reviews from these cups where the water just kind of fills it up and when it, the weight of the water is gone, the water's been consumed, then it just automatically fills up and it all comes from this big barrel right here. So essentially, unless there's like a drought, I really don't have to water the chickens. They just, they'll get their water from here and this is plenty enough for all mine. And then I think you can take them off and clean them out if you need to. They're really easy to clean. Very excited about low maintenance chicken keeping. I just love them so much. Okay. Coming out. You want to share everything that you did and I'll film you for the rain stuff because you did a lot with that. I mean, sure. you did everything, but you know what you're talking about. But so. you painted it. Oh, I painted this thing. It was crazy. We had real gutters that we put up on this and because it's so small, real gutters we thought looked really dumb because they just come out here and they're a little bit too deep. And so what we ended up doing is taking downspouts and cutting them in half. Now there's two sizes of downspouts that they sell at Lowe's. We got the big one, cut them in half with the band saw because the saw blade only goes one direction. If Who you have thought a, of that? <laughs> you did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> we had saw blades going both directions and it was just chipping it. So a saw blade going one direction, band saw, cut them in half. And then for the ends, the hangers, and then some other parts, we had to 3D print um, the gutter mounts so that we could have a nice looking gutter system and so that took a while to 3d print and design but our son parker did all that for us because he's got a 3d printer and so we just got that put together and got the gutters hung so easy easy stuff oh <laughs> and we'll go to the back where they all connect so on the back we have the end caps that we had the 3d print as well and we put a hole in it you can see the filter that i put in it's just aluminum screen kind of wadded up that keeps the crap from getting in the pipe so we had to print these with a hole in it and then we took a metal three quarter inch pipe to cut the threads in the hole so that we can screw on the attachments and go to normal pvc here the same on the other end but they just both come down under the window with a little slope and then we have regular rain capture stuff on our actual house we have a first flush diverter that like takes all the crap water from when it first rains and does not it diverts it away from your barrel so you get as clean a water as you can from the rain and so all the first flush systems for the house are big because you have a big roof and they only sell three or four inch for your first flush diverter so we had to make our own first flush diverter valve and stuff. So we just 3D printed the ball and the part that uh, goes on the top here. You can't see it, but it's inside there. We had to make our own. And then, so all of our dirty water will go here. It will drain out naturally. And then when that fills up, the clean water comes into the barrel. Whoa! You may realize that the picture and the sound is different. It's because our camera ran out of batteries and we had to get another camera another microphone but anyways after the dirty water comes out the clean water comes here and we got this barrel from from Walmart because it had the black stripes on the barrel instead of just one color and it's food safe um, the only thing that I didn't really like about it is the top is just this big huge vent and so we 3d printed some covers to cover up the screen so it didn't just let in all the crap from the trees it just fills it up so by the time like it gets here it's going through the filters that are here we have a filter here and then there's a, a screen here to keep out crap and mosquitoes and bugs and stuff so the cleanest water you can get for rain capture and then it's just all gravity feeding into their feed system and then this is the overflow runoff for when it gets too much in the barrel uh, when we have a lot of rain. That's the rain capture system. And then a very important element, you probably don't notice it until it's pointed out, but along the bottom here, Carolina Coops puts what they call a predator apron. It's just a green PVC coated fencing that is uh, stapled, but like pneumatic stapler. So inch and a half staples, 18 gauge with the air stapler that uh, locks them in place. And then uh, you get some yard staples to just keep this thing sucked down to the ground and then over time the grass grows over it it gets kind of yeah, covered up by the dirt and stuff 
So the point is not to see it, but it's nice. The green fencing's nice at the beginning because it still kind of blends in with the ground anyway. And that keeps the predators from digging in underneath that four x four that we're using for our footer. The one thing that I had mentioned at the beginning of the video that I would do different that I started noticing on some of the Carolina coops when you watch their videos of the coops that they've built for people is this truck bed door that we were talking about earlier. You'll notice when it's all shut that the hinge side and this side of the truck bed all lines up. And it's the same way on the other side. So if you look at all of it, it's just a big, huge square, which is nice for sweeping it out. But what's bad about it that I discovered after we built it is it's too wide. I wish that I built it narrow, even just three and a half inches. So a one by four width or a two by four width narrower on each side. And the reason for that is when you open up these big doors, they have to be all the way open for this truck bed to come down, which would be fine if it's just one door, but it's not. It's, it's two, two doors. doors. <laughs> and look what that door is already doing. It's starting to swing forward. So if you open up these latches to open up the truck bed, you're gonna need a buddy. If it was narrower, it wouldn't matter if these came forward a little bit because it would still be able to come down. So if you look at the Carolina Coops, their doors that come down, their, their new ones are a little bit narrower and I imagine for the same exact reason. So that's the one thing I would do different. If I would do anything different, honestly, if I had an actual professional paint sprayer, that would be glorious because painting this thing was it took a long time it's raw wood so i had to not only do primer i think i did like one to two coats some places two coats of primer and then two to three coats of paint that is a lot of paint that's a lot of time and it was all with a two inch brush so um we did do the run with rollers because i was just so tired of painting and my my son started helping me when i got to the run but this entire coop I painted inside and outside and it was, it's just nuts. There's a lot of paint, a lot of time. So I think my shoulders are, are hurting for it. But other than that, like, I really don't know if there's anything that I would do differently. One thing that I'm noticing though, is when the chickens roost, they are wanting to sit in that hardware cloth on the very edges and just kind of nestle in there and they're pooping all up there. So the babies are, I think the, the big ones are, are too yeah. big to get up there now. But. Other than that, I really, really like how it turned out. I think that I have the prettiest coop of all the coops. And I know I'm being biased, but we worked really hard on it. We were shocked at lumber prices when we started <laughs> the project. And so I, I thought it was gonna be much cheaper. It was not. And so this was definitely a huge investment for us. And if we ever move from this place, I am going to figure out a way how to take this with me because we're not doing it again. We're not, we'll just, we'll buy one from Carolina Coops if we can't figure out how to take it with us. But, but that's it, that's our coop, that's our chicken coop. We hope you enjoyed the tour and our thought process behind the decisions that we made and how we put it together. If you have any other questions, let us know. Either myself or David will answer because he really did all of the building. I did the painting and the, the envisioning of what the it was gonna picking, look like. The picking out. The picking, picking out, out of designing stuff. But he's the one who, who built it. He, he manifested my vision. And again, I was highly inspired by another coop, but we had to modify it for the heat here in Texas. To all you husbands out there, who your wife sent you this link. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I have a rooster that I have to reef home. It was sold to me as a hen, but Lucy is a Lionel and we've got to get rid of him because I did not want a rooster. So anyway, we're sorry again for uh, any husbands who are getting this link. I'm just kidding. I enjoyed building it for you. I like taking the picture of what you wanted and making it for you. It's beautiful. It's seriously, most beautiful coop ever 10 out of 10 love it thank you so much for watching our chicken coop tour i will be having other videos too like i said in my last video there's gonna be other old videos that i'm editing and putting out there uh, we really really just wanted to get this one out i love you guys and i will see you later bye